Welcome to the Gentleman's Talk, where the podcast talks about a man's battle with mental health, his personal experiences, and his journey to be a better soul. Hosted by James Dean Littlejohn. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Gentleman's Talk. Welcome to my long overdue podcast. Um, hope you're all right. It's been a while. A good week, I think, actually. I think it's about a week, anyway. Um, no real agenda today, but I've got some really ups and downs, some good stories to talk about. My experiences with how I dealt with them, I suppose. Um, and, yeah, sort of kind of everything that's gone on since since the last time I spoke to you. So, yeah, a bit of a, bit of a funny week last week. My first week in um, my, my new role, um, which was... You know, really good. A lot of training, a lot of exercise. You know, a lot of, sort of tra- exercising. What am I talking about? Um, a, a lot of uh, training. You know, that induction sort of stuff. So, um, a bit mundane. You know, that sort of stuff. But it's got to be done, hasn't it? You know, we need we need these we need these little training packages to make sure that we're fully on board and know what we're doing. So, yeah, it was a bit of a sort of kind of a bit of a funny week, really. Um, and I think because I wasn't doing a lot mentally. Um, that really sort of brought me down a little bit, um, just because I knew I had to do these mundane things, but I was there was nothing that was stimulating my mind. There was nothing that stimulates that was stimulating the process and, and the thought process. So anyway, I went to um, sort of had the the tail end of the week, and, and Thursday was really the first day. I went to visit. Uh, I went to do a site visit. And uh, on the way back, I was like, do you know what, it's, it's going past my old work. Uh, it just happened to be a year that day on the Thursday last week that I'd that I'd left. And um, I don't know, I felt, I felt strong enough, I suppose, to go back into an environment, uh, you know, that, that I loved and, and I'd been so dedicated to. And I probably, it sounds a bit strange to say that about work, but I genuinely did. And... Um, you know, I went in and uh, mixed reception, I think, you know, but understandably, whatever. Um, you know, had a good conversation with my old boss who just happened to be in. And, um, yeah, you know, it was it was nice. It was it sort of flew by, but it was it's something I needed to do because I hadn't been up there since last year. And as I said, you know, um, work for me was was my only saving grace. So I invested ninety nine point nine percent probably in into my work that was my life um so when I talked to you about coping mechanisms in previous times, a coping mechanism for my mental health was work, so yeah, of course, my company got an absolute outstanding performance, you know, and it sort of nurtured a, a good team and there was loads you know i just I was really really invested in it, but what people don't realize is that was my life as sad as it sounds but I was so invested in work that I for, I'd, I'd forgotten about everything else because life was work to me and work was life and if I constantly learning all the time and I was constantly invested and I was constantly looking to try and better myself and how can I improve this under this budget etc I was always improving but what people don't realize is when I left last year that was my life. So I went from having a very, very close team, very close team that was just, we all knew each other like the back of our hand. It was all, I, you know, through all my interviews that I'd done for the people that came in, it was like, I, I just want to make, I, this is a family to me. But what I didn't realise when every time I said that in those interviews, I, you know, I'm not interested in not interested in your work ethics. I can I can resolve that. I can sort that. I'm not I'm not interested in how good you are at the job because again I can teach you, train you, bring you on. That wasn't the phase. That wasn't the thing for me because all of that I I'm confident enough in my own ability to teach. And I don't. I mean, you know, I've, I've taught for years, so you know it doesn't really sort of kind of. Although some people will believe you that I that I've not done all that, but I did. I you know I was the sort of kind of. Well, the whole team that was there, I trained from 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 start to finish, and brought them all on. From, you know, you, you sit there, and I actually had the conversation actually because we were talking about the new site manager, and um, Doug turned around and went, uh, you know, this this guy, 
turned around and said, oh, you know, you're, you're a site manager. You're the site manager. You just remember where you've come on from. You, you know, you started as tech two and you come to site manager. And I was like, yeah, uh, I did the same. And she did the same under my under my guidance. Do you know what I mean? So I was like so invested. But what people don't realize is, you know, you, you lose track, don't you? And you just kind of go, you know, people don't recognize you and you're easily forgotten. So, but what they don't realize is that was my investment. My investment was that place. So when I left, that was my downfall. That was the whole problem with me. So, you know, it was nice and it was closure for me to just nip in in this new job, be really happy because I'm my own boss. I was enjoying, you know, walking around with some sort of kind of, not authority, but some kind of respect because of what I've learned that was really important to me. And I'm, cause I'm not bothered about authority. I really am not. I don't. I treat everybody. And I've always said I always treat the lowest person. And I don't mean low in a negative ser- sentence. But the, the I always treat. In fact, I'll do it politically correct. I always treat, teach the least experienced person exactly the same way. And, I, you know, as the most experienced. In terms of, like, how you treat them. Obviously, your expectations are going to be completely different from a manager perspective but I was so authority is not really a a thing for me but yeah so it was anyway it digressed massively so it was nice it was nice to go down the motorway and uh you know be happy and actually go I'm ready to to go in and say almost it was like a swan song for me it was like a a goodbye so I had that so Thursday I went in a good couple of hours and managed to walk away with a smile on my face and I did, and I've just, I never looked back. I was like, that's done for me. That's literally the chapter closed. And that was really, really important. And I didn't think I could do that because I always thought that that was going to be there. And I've actually resided to the fact now that no, that chapter is completely and utterly closed. And a lot of us sit there and I talk about closure all the time for people. And I talk about closure of relationships, closure of friendships. You know, it's one of those really important things. Well, I had to be ready to get closure. I had to be ready to go and seek that closure. Um, I still had a lot of ties there. I had a lot of feelings there, a lot of friendship there. So for me, it was a a massive investment. And yeah, I I found it very sort of difficult before then. But to walk in, say hi, lovely to see you, everybody. Do you know what I mean? Have a good chat. And then mosey on down the motorway going, that's that. That is done. I'm happy to move on. I actually have closure on something that was a, like nine years of my life and was my my f- saving grace for the whole of my depression. Everything. I lived it. So it's kind of... To let that go was really, really relevant to me. And I talk about this journey as a whole and how I'm working on myself tirelessly. And if anyone knows me truly they know that when I am committed to something I am committed I will achieve it and people that know me truly know me know that I've got this far in life not through anyone else's um, graces I've not relied on anyone else I've not asked anyone else for promotion or I've not asked anyone else to get me to where I am I'm happy to sit here now talk to you on a podcast at 40 year old and say that everything I have around me I've earned and that is a massive respectable thing for me and that's one thing I can hand on heart say is that through all of this journey I'm here because I've worked hard for it and you know jet like I said now so on the back of that when I say I'm on a journey to repair myself and move myself away from being you know dependent on on drugs and I don't mean drugs as in hardcore I mean prescription drugs I'm moving away from the need to that and all of this is just it's it's so relevant to get the closure on these certain aspects of life and move away from people but move even when you're moving away from somebody you know and you think I'm done with you Uh, even if you you you're fully acknowledging that you're you've moved on or you don't want to talk then ultimately as long as you give them that closure i've told you as long as you give them an opportunity to defend themselves and explain themselves you'll you'll do things the right way and this is what this is about it's doing it the right way doing everything the proper way and anyway so i digressed quite a bit there but it's good it was relevant on the it was on point wasn't it um let me take a little sip please 
I'm talking a bit longer tonight, so I have to be a little bit um, just because I'm re- I've got so much to talk about. Um, but mainly just because, um, yeah, I missed it, and I need that release. I've not really been on point, if I'm bo- if I'm honest. And and that was, you know, we we got to Thursday, so Thursday, you know, I'd, I'd done that and I had a really good day. And um, but I did notice I was I was lacking. I hadn't done it, hadn't spoken for a while, or talked for a while, but I was invested in a new job that was quite draining because it was all training and again you're doing education, you're learning all day, and then you're trying to talk to your friends and you know what I mean it, it it sort of it just kept beating me down, not to my levels that I've been before, which was a relief to say, and I must say, you know I do, I've I've, I've really tried to improve myself so much, but I'm seeing the re- I'm seeing the rewards now of three months of hard work just three months of hard work on myself and and recognizing now instead of going months where I wouldn't look after myself I'm going weeks to days so I'm going right I haven't medica- meditated and I walked in tonight and I was like I haven't meditated in ages again not mom but reflection time meditation reflection time whatever you want to call it I hadn't done it for a while and I was like god and that knock on is like this morning. I didn't have a cold shower. Admittedly, I was up at stupid o'clock to do a site visit, and um, I was on the train at quarter past six in the morning. So, um, you know, I, I didn't really think about that at that time because I think it was uh, I think it was still half asleep. But but anyway, I'd noticed and acknowledged. I'm getting I'm getting better and better um, at things. And then also another thing i sort of got to friday and friday was like i had friday uh i had friday off um in fact uh i can't remember what the hell friday oh i was popping to ikea to get some little bits and bobs but what i have noticed is with this new job and with the doing things the right way and getting closure and speaking to people etc etc um i don't know i'm listening a bit more i'm a, a bit more positive I'm, you know, relating a lot more. I'm, I'm engaging a lot more, which means I'm sort of opening up to a few more people. And, 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 you know, I got to sort of Friday and then I was like, we, I started gaming again. So I jumped online with, uh, whilst gaming. And, um, I was been playing, as I told you, I've had that podcast while I was talking about Dying Light. And, uh, yeah, it, it was absolutely incredible playing that. We played it to the early hours. Uh, you know, it was just a good, it was just an absolute good crack, but I've noticed I'm starting to get into the things that I used to enjoy. And yeah, I had a good crack on, on Friday for a few hours. And then, um, one of the sort of kind of, I don't know, the sort of the pinnacle to the week for me. And, and this is where the story will take a little bit of a, not a turn, not a turn, the wrong word, but Saturday came along and I'd arranged, um, a little while ago to, uh, it's a good, good friend of mine in in, in one, my old job, and <clears throat> we just kind of, you know, when you just have a, a lot a lot in common with somebody, and, and we were just uh, chewing the fat, talking away, and um, just kind of, you get that sort of kind of, I don't know how to describe it really, male bonding, isn't it? you know, you don't really sort of kind of get it, with, but, you, but you know when you have a really good conversation with someone, and you can relate, and you just think, oh yeah, I mean, similar sort of kind of hobbies and such like, and um yeah it was just good banter and i was like i said to him because he's off he's off to uh, a, a different location soon so um i was like uh, he, he's yeah moving so moving house and and i was like oh okay mate so we'll we'll have to uh, get together or something uh, and have a have a catch up um uh, pro- you know proper sort of kind of I'll have a beer and and, and do some uh, shooting or something because he's into massively into shotgun shooting so anyway i had like i could do most weekends it's kind of you know you have a nice easy thing planned out and it always because uh, i've got children that always goes sideways so i was meant to see him at 11 o'clock on the saturday and we had it all planned out he was um he was going to uh go some sort out all the shooting and all that sort of stuff and then we were just gonna have, have something to eat afterwards and then a few pints a few beers and then you know call it call it a night anyway um we were supposed to start at 11, and I thought 11 was a bit of a random time, if I'm brutally honest. I just thought, he said, oh, we'll go shooting from 11, and I was like, oh, okay, mate, well, I'm used to doing things in Saturday afternoon normally, you know, because not, normally when I sort of kind of do something, it's in the afternoon, you get the morning with the kids. Um, anyway, um, this particular friend of mine doesn't have children, so um, he, I'm hoping he listens to this, he'll acknowledge the fact that it's a little less flexible, the amount of uh, shit he was giving me on, on the evening. So anyway, um, 
to be precise, I think he was calling me a piece of shit <laughs> whilst he was drunk. Anyway, so anyway, he we he texted me. So I had this organised for the Saturday, and then on the Friday, he texted me on the Friday night. I was gaming away, and uh, he said, "Oh, you know wh- what's happening to me? You know, you up for still up for tomorrow?" Uh, and I must caveat it that um, one of the reasons why we are talking is because we both were talking. Oh, he asked me a few questions. I was a mental health advisor. And as I've said to you this year, I'm I'm being quite open and honest. So when people say to me, where have you come from and all this sort of stuff, I'm quite open and honest and I tell people and people say to me, oh, you're, you're a bit funny to tell. Or you're a bit funny. It's little bits crop up and it, and it always reverts to it. I say, yeah, I, you know, I've got PTSD and some days I struggle, sometimes I don't, you know, but I'm really open and honest about it now because I'd rather, it doesn't affect me, but I'd rather just you knew because if you just know, you'd understand if I'm in a quiet mood or whatever or a little bit emotional or take something to to a little bit of heart. It's easier for me to explain to you I have a mental health condition in a nice way than it is to learn it the hard way after a complete anabolic and then you're stood in front of a D&I advisor trying to explain yourself um, you know, that you've basically come across as a bully. So it's easier for me to just explain it than it is to have a full argument and fall out with people. And I've learned that through the hard ways of not telling people and then people don't understand when you absolutely go ballistic that you've got a mental health problem. Or you tell people you've got a mental health problem and uh, they don't know to the extent of how that will relate, which I've even had with friends of mine have said, you know, I don't know how you can just go off the, you know, sort of kind of, fucking shouting and stuff you know when it was early days and I was like that's quite easy it's you know I'm just upset so anyway so we got talking and that's that I need to caveat this whole conversation so it doesn't sort of kind of look like you know <laughs> it's dodgy but um anyway digress massively but so we got talking and um really wanted to help him out and I was like yeah well we'll get together and make, you know like you do you have to have a beer mate so we're gonna have a chat and he said oh we'll sort it out so the knock on effect was we ended up um arranging for Saturday so I thought the afternoon he said 11 I had to stop because I had my daughter's birthday next weekend and uh, I was kind of like right I need to uh, get some bits and bobs so I said I'm going to be over a bit later but it was also caveated with I was getting a lift over so I could get picked up at you know later on in the evening so I could have a few drinks so I was like mate the best I can do is leave here at 25 past 12 I think it was to get to you for quarter to one and then we'll go down but I didn't realize as well that the the range where we went shooting closes at two o'clock so I thought it would be closed at five if I'm brutally honest I didn't realize because no one normally closes that early so excuse me sorry that's me talking like an absolute fool um so yeah there was a lot of uh, uncertainty around this you know but I, but do you know what um Oh, sorry. And going back, I need to go back a little bit because I've just fast forward a little bit. But acknowledge that we've just we've just sort of kind of caught up. But he did on a Friday, and he said to me, "I feel a bit ill." So that was it. So he's caveat. He, he, he's had mental health problems, not mental health problems, but he's got things to talk about. Um, and he just wanted to know: is it you know what what does this mean? Have I had experience in all this sort of stuff? And yeah, we got we got talking, and I was like, oh yeah, you know, and I'm quite open and honest, which I think people probably admire when you you're a man trying to talk. Um, you know, if someone's open and honest, you can be open and honest back. It's always a bit of a touchy subject, and uh, yeah. So he texts me saying, oh, feeling a bit rough, and I was like, oh, is this his out? Is this his thing of saying so I might not make it tomorrow? And I was like, oh okay, um, no worries, mate. Get some rest. He was like, yeah, yeah, you know, so. This is where I talk about mental health battles and anxiety. So I thought you might have been doing that to sort of back out on the next day. And uh, got to the next day in the morning, and I was like, I said to him, I'm not coming over to about quarter to one. Sorry, mate. I said, you know, X, Y, and Z. And he was like, yeah, um, okay, mate, no worries. Nothing I can do. A bit short and sharp, but I never really acknowledged it because, you know, it was just what it was. I thought it was just a sh- short and sharp thing. And, um, yeah, so he, and then he said to me, um, oh, if it's your daughter's birthday, you can, we can postpone if you want. And I was like, again, he's given me another out now. Now, you know, why is he giving me an out? Does he not want to do it? And I talk about the out thing, whereas if you give someone a lead so they can get out of the situation, if you've got a mental health problem, nine times out of ten, you'll want to try and take that. And if someone says, oh, yeah, you know, he's a bit... I'm used to people making excuses for me because I just don't go to things. I just 
don't socialize or I just don't go out and some people give me an out and I go yeah I'll take it happily I'll even to the point when he'd give me the out it was really easy for me to turn around then and go yeah sorry mate I didn't even think about it I've been an absolute dick I'm a bloke I don't know about birthdays I never remember a birthday etc 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 so I could have kind of gone down that route really played on it and he would have been like yeah no worries probably would have been really upset and gutted and I probably wouldn't have noticed as if it would be the other way around that if someone had done that to me and I gave them an out and they took it I'd be gutted and that's happened to me before even with my best friend I've given an out and I've been gutted or one thing used to really bug me and my friend was uh when he say should we do something on Friday and I'd be like or I'd be like yeah and he's going to listen to this because this is probably news to him and he used to say to me um yeah yeah I was like yeah come over mate so I'd expect like a big drinking sesh because that's what we do we get together we drink we fucking love life we do stupid shit and that's basically what we do really we just me and my mate just get pissed every time we see each other and what he used to is yeah I'll come over but I'm no I'm I'm gonna have one beer and drive back and I'd go I'd instantly go well fuck off then mate I don't don't want you to come around mate if you're not gonna get smashed at me you're gonna sit here for one one beer and be boring that's how I used to look at it a really childish point of view so yeah, he gave me the out, and uh, and I didn't take it. I was like, no, I think he's giving me an out for a reason, but I didn't take it anyway. So I turned up, and then obviously took a barrage of shit because he was racing around. He was like, we've got to go. We're gonna, we need to be at the range. And then we got to the range, and, and he was like, what time do you close, mate? And the guy was like, 2 o'clock. I was like, fuck, it's 5 past what fucking 1, mate. We're only going to get by the time we walk around to the range. I was like really apologetic and he was like to be fair though in my defense he thought it was three so I thought we would have got a good couple of hours out of that um and anyway um I then later so we went off we did some shooting and you know what (laughs) fucking absolutely amazing I mean I the last time I shot a shotgun was with with my mate and his and uh, my other mate which is actually his brother um so two of my mates and their brothers and um we all went shooting i think i'm not you know on the tip of my tongue i think we did it for my 30th i'm sure we did it for my 30th so that would make it 10 and a half years ago was the last time in fact it was my 30th because i was working for pinchbeck at the time and yeah and it was the guy that i was working there for so that was 10 and a half years ago was the last time i shot and we did a full shotgun round robin thing and um tell a lie because i told the guy i told the guy it was when she was that day it was two clays i'd hit out of the whole day so we're talking there was like two about three hours i think it was three 12 to three three hours shooting i hit two clays and i know that because my um my mate's brother uh he basically got one clay kieran got no clays and i think or something out kieran wrote, but it was like anyway it was it was such a minimal amount that I turned up and then I was being coached by this guy and he was because he's you know he shoots um kind of up there sort of great level to be fair and and I had a really good shooting session and uh, an absolute load of fun um I I think I missed four from you know I don't know it must have been about I think it was about 20 or th- was it 30? yeah it must have about 30 30 uh, clay pit clays and and I missed four and they were nails ones that I missed as well, under his guidance. And but do you know what? It, it, it's like I refer back to how if I'd have said no, and and I'd have taken that out, and I'd said actually yeah, it is my daughter's birthday. Lied through my teeth, and not done it. Um, the first stage of this conversation and this topic I'm talking about, I would have missed out on that opportunity. So, so I'm just slipping down again on my sofa so i'd have missed that opportunity wouldn't i i would have um i would have missed the chance of number one meeting a a great new guy you know a great new friend great new guy really loads in common and i would have missed meeting him i would have missed having a go at shooting and having an absolute blast it was even raining as well out of what can only be described as a beautiful shotgun i would have missed that i would have missed one-to-one lessons with somebody who does it to a top top level standard and i wouldn't have had that hour of fun so that's just by taking that out sometimes you don't realize the knock-on effect of by taking that out and not 
pushing yourself when you've got those anxieties or you've got those second thoughts or you'd rather be a lazy bastard and sit there all weekend not doing anything and then you get to Monday and you feel like shit because you sat there going, I've done nothing all weekend, you've not stimulated your mind or body, you've just slumped into a chair, watch TV or played on a bit of computer or you might have walked to the shops to get a packet of crisps, whatever. You haven't done anything that's stimulated you. So you could have had an, I could have had an opportunity and I could have taken it apart and gone, no, I don't want it. I'm not, I've got a really easy out for a bloke here. His daughter's birthday. <laughs> doesn't, he doesn't know what day my birthday is or what, or sorry, what her day her birthday is. He's not going to question it. He's going to be upset. And so it just goes to show by pushing yourself that little bit harder. And not only that, it just got better and better. I had a little bit of, disheartment i suppose was was the right word it was because so we'd been shooting and uh i didn't really acknowledge the guns and all that sort of stuff i didn't really acknowledge that i just acknowledged that it was a great time for me because for me personally to push myself to go and do that was a big leap to go and have a go at shotgunning was a big leap and you know and then I just, that to me was quite a lot, but what I didn't realise, and this is the bit where I felt a bit, I felt a bit of a prick if I'm honest, as well as a little bit disheartened, um, but I, I, I'm going to caveat, which is going to be an additional bit to this, where I think we can, lessons learned on this, um, and certainly how I'll, not lessons learned for the people or the person, but more of a lesson learned for me. Um, because I do the same so I we pitched up at his house and um, he was like you know come on in we'll unload the car and what I didn't realise when we were unloading the car we unloaded two shotguns we unloaded an air rifle with a PC, a PCP air rifle which is like a thingy and um, he had all his stuff with him and he was going to do what could only be described as a, a good th- free three hour lesson on shooting so I'd seen the effort he'd gone into and I didn't even see his gun. And I felt disheartened because I was just happy that I was going over to see someone that normally I would have fucked off without being rude. You know, normally I'd have just gone, nah, I'm not interested. Because, you know, I've, 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 met, I've met, to caveat the conversation, I've met people and I've gone and been friends with people and I've been absolutely shafted. So I just don't now. And I, that, that sounds a little bit like... Um, you know, I'm an emotional fool. Uh, because anyway, that's not the way I would have described it ten years ago. But um, I, you know, we have to be very careful what we say now. So, but I, I, I come across as a bit of a little bit of an uh, over emotional. I think if I if I said that, um, but it's just trying to think. Really, <laughs> it's just. I don't really it's it's just how you take emotions and how you kind of you know deal with things and I was just happy that I was going over to see him so for me it was a big leap because I've been in situations where I've fucked off friends or I've had friends and then they've just taken advantage of me and they've and I'm not saying that that's what he was going to do but what I tend to do is be a little bit shielded a little bit guarded and I'll go and have a, a you know a chat with people you know, and I'll go and have a pint with somebody, but to go to that length. So I felt, but I felt really disheartened because I'd seen the effort that he would put in, not myself, because I turned up with nothing. I was planning on turning up and I was going to go around to the shop. I was going to buy a bottle of gin. We were going to get a kebab. I was going to pay for his kebab because it was my way of saying thank you. Um, and I know that sounds a little bit sort of trivial, really, but it was just my gesture to say thanks for taking me out. But when I'd realised the effort that he'd gone to, I was like, shit, mate, you really want to make a like a proper full day of this. And I've completely and utterly miscommunicated that, or not miscommunicated it. I've misinterpreted what that day was, and I felt really bad, so t- to the point where I was like, and it's really easy for me to say now, like, and, I, and, I, and I will say that that wasn't even a challenge at the time, but it's, re- it's even easier for me to say because the, the night went on and it was fucking fantastic. And, um, but I, I felt bad and I was like, look, mate, 
you know i know you're leaving in a couple of months but we'll get another one in we'll just but we'll just go down and have a um we'll just have a, a shooting you know we'll go we'll properly go at 11 and uh you know have a full shooting and i'll bring um my air rifle down and we'll just have a, a you know have a good thing it's got like an 80 meter range or something um so easy for me to say now but at the time i did feel bad because i was like he's gone to a proper you know and he probably bought a gun each and we were probably gonna do a little bit of competition stuff because i've got to know him a bit more um which i also have to caveat you know so anyway we went back we were packing stuff away and you know straight away beer out and and, and we just got talking and bear in mind we we finished shooting and we were back it is at three o'clock and we just carried on chatting non-stop as in like you know literally non-stop until i think it was quarter past two in the morning when i was like man i've got to knock it on the head um plus the fact that um i will say um i'm not going around there without a drink again because he introduced me to this stuff and it's called dragon soup and um if I, you know anyone that knows me knows it takes quite a lot to, for me to get drunk i'm quite uh, rotund you know and i'm not you know so for me it's, it take, does take me a lot to drink um i had three cans of this stuff called dragon soup and uh, i i barely couldn't see um i was having massive heart palpitations i was i was smashed slow my words it was like 7.9% in a in a can and and he described it to me when we first spoke about it. He said, oh, do you fancy a can of dragon soup? And I was like, fuck it now. Anything that's named dragon soup, though, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm 40, I should have learned. You know, if something's called aftershock, when I had aftershock and I drank a pint of that when I was 18, and I was that was my introdu- introductory drink, drink was a, a pint of aftershock. Yeah, we were fucking crazy back then. And anything's called gold slager. Do you know what I mean? All these drinks they're named that way for a reason so you'd think with the hangovers i've had i would have learned but called dragon soup anyway I, I, he, he described it as me it's like vodka red bull on vodka red bull on red bull on red bull on red bull on steroids and i was like fucking oh what's he talking about mate and and that's what it was you you, you just described it as like it's basically it's an energy drink with shit loads of like strong alcohol in it so I had one of these things. And I was like, oh, it's a bit like a really sweet cocktail. And uh, yeah, I, so I had one of those. And then obviously he was like, do you want another one? Try a different one. I was like, yeah, all right, mate. Yeah, I'll try I'll try another different flavor. And um, of course, then I started getting tipsy. And I was like, fucking two cans. Fucking hell, two can damn. Do you know what I mean? And um, I think I think the last time that uh, that I was this smashed on, on, on a can especially this smashed uh was when i did it with um we did a game called edward cider hands um and obviously if anyone knows it's called edward scissor hands well called edward cider cider hands and if you've seen the film you'll know that the guy can't use his hands so what you're supposed to play is you get really really strong alcoholic drinks and you take them to your hands um, and you can't do anything until you've drank all those cans once those cans are drunk you can take them off um, but you can only take them off for a quick pit stop, go for a toilet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, it does get to the point where you almost you're so drunk you you just don't you can't undo your zip, so you just don't. We all end up playing outside. Um, anyway, so it's a bit like Edward Cider Hands. So yeah, he was. Um, oh, that's a bit of a crazy story. <laughs> Sorry, I just chucked that in there. Edward Cider Hands. That took me right back then as I was thinking about it. But yeah, so it's, it, they're called this. So he called Dragon Soup. So I was like, okay, mate, well, I'll try it. So the second one in, getting real tipsy, starting to get like fucking crazy, but not getting hungry. I was like, I'm not hungry, mate. I said, because I was so, there was so much caffeine in there that that's why I wasn't hungry. So yeah, I, I we, we chewed the fat for, for absolutely ages. He did this uh, thing where we were YouTube videos and we were watching uh, YouTube. Um, it's I can't remember what he called it. Uh, pop roulette or something like that youtube roulette that was it and you just choose your video and we were watching uh gang's paradise and and uh or Cooley, i think it was and a couple of queen things and stuff a couple of uh 80s stuff really good stuff you know just sat there singing away um i think it was a rave actually there was a rave song in there we listened to helter skelter at one stage god that threw me right back didn't it so anyway 
I got to my third can, and I'm just like, mate, I can't see. This is ridiculous. What is going on? This is disgusting. <laughs> it's absolutely disgusting. And then he, anyway, he was like, shut up, you piece of shit. And anyway, uh, I laughed at that. So um, that little comment, and that's become prevalent because he then called me a piece of shit for the remainder of the night, uh, to the point where I was like, I'm going to go to bed, mate. He's like, yeah, no worries, mate. I'll show you where the room is, you piece of shit. Grab the fucking banister, you piece of shit. Come around the corner, you piece of shit. Fucking, that's the bathroom. That's your fucking bed, you piece of shit. And I was like, that's how he said it. And I was like, wow. So anyway, go out the next morning, come downstairs, massive hangover. And that was kind of the rest of my day ruined. But thank you for that. (laughs) Um, But... So the, the 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 point of that story is really is if you're if you if you've been invited to somewhere or you organise something, try your hardest to keep it or to keep that um, appointment alive. You know, you, you really need to because it it might mean the difference you know, of, a, of of some sort of experience that you're going to miss out on or some sort of kind of venture. Do you know what I mean? It's like if I hadn't have taken the my, my previous uh, my previous job for the last year, um, you know, I wouldn't have met some amazing people, including one person who's invited me to any time I want go to Australia um, and have a holiday for him. He'll put me up for however long I need, however long I need or want. And that was just through friendship. It was just through talking. Um, you know, I've kind of, uh, even to the point where they're talking about me still and, and saying that they miss me around camp. You know, you're that much of a personality on camp that people miss you. Uh, so, you know, so so it's kind of like, yeah, it, it, it's, I suppose it's just meeting and greeting people. That's why, you know, so if you're on that sort of kind of you know, campsite area and you, you're meeting people all the time, um, you know, people miss you. People, you get your regulars, you get your normal people, don't you? So... But anyway, I've I've got people, yeah, that and and that's really humbling for me, and really important. But you miss those situations, so it's really, really important to try and nurture yourself and get yourself better, so you don't miss out on these opportunities and don't say no. I mean, like I said, I've met this guy; he's an absolute fucking legend. You know, he's 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 hilarious, and at the same time as when I'm letting these toxic people go, um. That I've that I've spoke about in previous podcasts. We've all come along. We've all we've all learned that. We've all come along for this journey. So hopefully, by the time you've got to this bit of the podcast, you've recognised it yourself. I even had this guy as well when I I said to him, he listens to my podcasts, and I'm really well supported my podcast from from from, from people around me that have, that give me great feedback. And he said he keeps asking me, you know, when's a podcast up, buddy, and, and all this sort of stuff because he's invested in. It, he's put his friend on it, and um. He knows quite a bit about me, but I wouldn't have. It's really important to 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 make sure that what I'm talking about, contents wise, is 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 relevant, and that we're we're all along for this journey. And we're well, as you get rid of those toxic people, as you engage with other people, and you know nowadays, you know if you if you get to a point where you're going to like someone, there's people I've met and I go, I'm not going to like you. You're just an absolute fucking dick. Or I've been for, sort of forced, I call them forced acquaintances. Um, and you just got to let them go and you've got to let those negative people go um, because they're the ones that drag you down. But at the same time, you normally find, as I'm finding anyway, as I'm, as I'm soon discovering, I've let a lot of negative people go. And with letting negative people go, um, and I don't mean that, in a horrible way, I know it comes across as as horrible because why are they negative? Maybe they need your help, James. And trust me, I play devil's advocate on everything in my mind, so I understand that I've, I, I I don't question, I don't take irrational processes. I excuse me, I analyze everything, um, and I, and I really do because I don't believe in doing things rationally. I used to, but now I'm very methodical. I'm, I research everything, I look at everything, I, I overanalyze everything if I'm really honest, but I do it thoroughly so I know that I'm doing the right thing. If I let someone go, and I've had recently, I've let some people go and people have come back to me and said, oh, you know, such and such is asking for you or, you know, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, and I get that. But 
that person or those people, they're not going to help themselves, so I can't help them because I wouldn't have moved away from them unless I've at least tried. And if they, I've always maintained and I've always told people, you need to work on yourself. People will not do it for you. If you want that job, you go and get it. If you want that pay rise, you go and get it. If you want that relationship, you go get it. If you want to leave a relationship, you go do it. It's not going to be done for you. If you've had enough for that friend, ignore him. No one else is going to do it for you. Don't sit there and bitch and moan because he just uses you. Just deal with it. And what I'm discovering now is that, in actual fact, as I'm pushing away people and I'm gathering this time, because I do, naturally, because I'm not talking to as many people, um, I'm finding that I'm engaging with other people. So, you know, I've found a guy that I knew from school on and off that, is, in actual fact, is one of the most fucking positive people I've I've met, if I'm brutally honest. And, you know, he's an absolute... The, the morning messages I get from him are amazing from us, you know, as us in our, in our little group. It's absolutely incredible. And he's just got an abundance of positivity. He's doing this little thing at the moment, which I'm fucking sterling. We're all doing this little health drive, and we, we talk to each other in this little group. And it's, we, we, you know, positive vibes only, he's called it. And it really is. Morning, night, noon. Yeah, weekends go a bit quiet because we're with our families at the end of the day. And during the week... That's when we need propping up because weekends are with our families and friends. But weekdays is when we, that's when you need propping up and nurturing. But at the same time, acknowledging you still might need that prop up and nurture the weekends because we're friends, you know? Weekends for friends. That's the title of this uh, podcast, by the way, because I just love that. Um, so, yeah, so I've nurtured that and, and he's, you know, he's, a, he's an amazing guy and I'm learning about his journey now and I'm helping him. Because he wants to help himself. I've got my ultimate, you know, and I say that. And do you know what? Um, people laugh, and, and I've had a few people say, oh God, you know, you're a bit, are you, are you with him, are you? You never shut up about him. Well, no, I've got a friend of mine, more than happy to say it. And, uh, you know, he is just, he's like I said, I've said to you in every single podcast, and I really haven't said it for a while, but I need to reiterate it, that he's my best mate. It, through and through he literally knows everything about me the guy is a fucking legend um i'm worried about him because i think he's got alzheimer's coming on um but i've said to him if he has got alzheimer's coming on um i promised him uh, you know bearing in mind he's 40 uh, i've promised him that every single time i see him i will have a different job and i'm going to wear a different wig a different hairpiece. I'm going to become a different character every time I see him. I'm literally going to do that for the rest of our lives. So if he's got Alzheimer's, he's going to make it, I'm going to make it so that he meets everybody. Do you know what I mean? And I'll do a diary and I'm going to take a photo with him um, every single time I see him, like he met the president or whatever. Do you know what I mean? I'm just going to do that. And I said that to him, it doesn't matter, mate. If you're losing your marbles, mate, you're losing fucking marbles, mate. You know, I'd rather lose me marbles than die of... Uh, cancer when I do you know what I mean at the end of the day so if I lose my marbles mate doesn't mean every just means every day's a good day and every day's a new day uh you've got to look at the positives on things but you know I talk to him absolutely every day um mainly you know he, he's just got I can't I can't I can't say any more about somebody when you've got a friend that is a it is that you know they I think they say the friendship if you've been a friend longer if you've been a friend with somebody for seven years or longer you know and you've known them and you've it's really important that you've engaged with them for those seven years then you're a friend for life it, it's there's no way you can't hide it because if you've been a true friend with that person for seven years and I mean they've seen your emotions they drank with you they've been you know weekends away you know fishing or whatever whatever you do is female friends male friends mixed gender friends whatever non-binary friends whatever Whatever you do, if you do it constantly with somebody for seven years, you will be a friend for life. And I've tested that, and trust me, it is. I've tried pushing people away that have been, you know, away from me for a long time, and they've been with seven years, and I'm always drawn because I, I'm, I'm invested in their lives enough. So it's really important to know that. But, you know, we're encroaching on 29 years, I think it is, this year. 29 years we've known each other. And when I say 29 years, that's... 29 years of doing fucking everything fucking drinking socializing fun work 
you know we worked together for like seven years so i'm really proud to have that you know and and i've nurtured that kept that you know i found this other guy who's got something common with a mental health thing and that seems to be how i'm connecting people to be honest because it's very relatable isn't it i've done that i've had that and and again i've had a fucking an amazing weekend with a completely and utterly new friend who's literally you know i'm still suffering now i'm still tired now from that fucking friday my shoulder feels like it's been battered it right in the sort of soggy f- fleshy bit of my shoulder from the shotgun so but there'll be some activists out there that say that the clay pigeon had a life and I shouldn't have done it. So I apologise for that profusely. Um, you know, and, I, and 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 along the way, I've had some, you know, some good some good stuff. So, but I mean, I have a very small network of friends, um, and it is it's very niche. You know, it's very niche to get in the to the club, little John, as I call myself, because I'm that much of an arrogant tosser that I've called my own life a club. No, I haven't really, but um, I'm always for in, in increasing the size of my group, um, but I'm very, very particular. I've got a lot of trust, a lot of faith, and you've got to have similar personalities because otherwise we will clash and we won't become friends. So if we don't have a similar personality um, and, you know, it's not sort of kind of natural, then <laughs> we just won't click. You know, it's, it's as simple as that. I'm 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 like Marmite, so... Um, Unless you're like one of my mates who's like my best mate who's like complete opposite to me. And I think that's why we've managed to stay friends for 29 years. Because if you're normally the same, I have to take you in small, small doses. <laughs> because otherwise there's too much testosterone and fuel in the air. Uh, my best mate is, um, you know, he's got more estrogen in his body than testosterone. So I don't have to worry about him. Um, you know, if I, pu- if I pluck a flower, he'd cry. Um, he's a bit of an emotional one like that, but um, good lad. I love him to bits. So I've, yeah, and I've just nurtured everything. And, and like I say, you know, closing the door doesn't have to be horrible. Doesn't have to be horrible. And I've had a few things. Like I said, I was chatting to this friend at the weekend, and he said, "You know what? I listened to your podcast, and I've, in fact, I've had three people say this to me." Um, and they turn around and say to me, I, I, "I don't know if you've heard in a podcast. I hope you have." That it takes thirty seconds to reply. So, if somebody, and I'm not saying <clears throat> you should be at someone's beck and call, and I'm not saying that at all, but it takes thirty seconds to reply to say thank you or, or yeah, nice or whatever. Or you can be a relationship because they love you. It doesn't matter. You don't have to put context to it. You're just simple and effective. But at the same time, it takes thirty seconds or even it takes a split second of thought, click of a fingers to go oh. He's popped in my head. Send him a text message to 30 seconds. Boom. How's it going, mate? Spark a conversation. Doesn't mean that you need to reply straight away. Fully acknowledge we have our own lives. But what it does do, and this is what I've done. It, it might work for you. It might not. But what I tend to do is um, WhatsApp is, is fantastic. So what it tends to do is I, you can now have archived conversations and you can have normal conversations. So... What I tend to do is I tend to uh, put the lesser people that I talk to in groups and stuff that I'm not really bothered about replying, you know, or I look at as and when, because WhatsApp does give you a notification at the top of your messenger bar. Other messaging services are available, um, just so I don't get in trouble. Um, and what you can do is I put I put certain ones in, in archive. So there'll be people that I talk, the groups that I use, I put them in archive and I can talk to them as and when I need to. I'm not really worried about it. So, But I'm a little bit OCD, so I can't... Um, but it, OCD seems to be working for me because what I tend to do is I have my messages open and I tend to clear them away. So when I've spoken to everybody, that's it done and dusted. I've acknowledged I've, I've had a conversation and we, we all close that conversation down. So I delete the message. Because I'm like, I'm done now. I don't need to worry about the past. If it was uh, worth retaining, I would have retained the conversation anyway. I don't need to look at the history of a conversation and text message to understand the future text message or the future conversations. Sometimes I have been caught on that when people have asked me work shit and I've deleted it from my OCD and gone, I don't fucking know what you said. Or someone says, oh, I've sent you a number and then I go OCD, I've had a conversation, I've done and I swipe the delete button, and then on that message was the number. And I go, sorry, bud, can you send that again to me? I think got a digit wrong. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You come up with an excuse. So it, it can backfire. 
it can backfire but at the same time it's very rare and we're allowed a little bit of percentage aren't we to be wrong um so yeah but it gets me to talk to other person anyway but what i've started to do now is when people um when people when someone pops in my head so if i'm thinking about somebody i'm like oh fucking i wonder what he's doing today i will there if i've got enough time to to acknowledge a thought about that person because we do we randomly think about people that are around us all the time um you know odd moments i get it there is random moments where you'd be sat there but if if i do that what i tend to do then is i tend to go okay right i send him a message and i go hi mate how's things simple as but what that does now is i've engaged with him so he's going to then come back to me i'm not going to reply straight away if i have the ability to yes but what I will do then is when I then go into my messages, because I am getting slightly older, you do forget to reply. And there is people that are even young that forget to reply. So we're all, we're all, um, you know, we're all focused on the fact we can do that. But what it does, it leaves that message open. So I go, oh, well, why is he there? And then I open a message and it could be a day, could be an hour, could be a week. It's never a week because I'm, I'm, I'm too on point for that. But if you're one of these people that likes to leave shit for a week in your phone, you crazy bastard. <laughs> um but you you should see the the message there. So you'll say you look at it and you go, oh Christ, he replied. I didn't reply back. Then get a thorough time to reply, or in the evening. Do you know what I mean? When you're looking at your phone, you go, oh, I've got two minutes. Oh shit, yeah, yeah, man, how's it going? And I do that now because we're conscious. I wouldn't say we. I wouldn't say we've got busy lives. I wouldn't say we've got busy lives. Come on, I mean some of us do, but I'd say we've got lazy really lazy lives we've got all this technology and i spoke about it quite a bit with my friend in fact we had this conversation a couple of weeks ago and we do you know what we've done jack shit about it we said we got this conversation stuff and we should be doing it more we should skype each other we should not skype skype's fucking old skype's dead in the water now i think (laughs) but we can facetime each other we can chat we can do this we can whatsapp message uh do we do it no do we fuck do we talk about it yeah yeah we do all the time and we never do it it's it's pretty much as simple as that. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. So we need to adapt a ways of dealing with our lives because we are focused. And and I had this I had a little bit of an open conversation with my friend the other day and I was I find it really hard because I'm very old school and I don't know whether this is to do with the way that I've been brought up without technology. So my childhood was, you know, knocking on doors you'd, you'd walk from one end of town to to the other end of town to knock on a door to see if they were in to find out they weren't in they'd gone on holiday for a week or a weekend or do you know what i mean they, they'd gone out shopping and they'd been dragged along with the parents because we're for some reason we were less trusted um it's really crazy we were less trusted in the house I mean, you can't stay in your own son and you're like oh yeah oh, yeah fair point mate you might burn the house down cooking yourself tea what i am gonna do though Dad, is I'm going to go and cycle 20 miles up a fucking dual carriageway and I'm going to go and walk some dogs at the Dogs Trust. Yeah, no problem, son. I can do that, but I'm not leaving you at home. Put that in your head <laughs> right now when you think about it. That I wasn't allowed to stay at home on my own, but I remember cycling up the dual carriageway, cutting across four lanes in a dual carriageway, going both ways, Sorry, two lanes, so two, two, you know, it's dual carriageway. We should know that, not motorway, dual carriageway. Down all the way through to the dog's trust to walk the dogs all day and then cycle back in the dark with no lights. But God forbid that I sit at home and eat biscuits and drink milk while watching shitty cartoons. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in the car where your parents smoke with the windows up because it's cold. Oh, yeah, but God, do you know what I mean? So I think it's probably the way I've been brought up. Um, you know, that's the 80s for you, isn't it? It was a good times. Health and safety, and I am one of them, was not around then. <laughs> um, but anyway, digressing massively. So to the point where I just completely lost the train of thought because I was thinking about that. But, um, yeah, God, it's gone anyway. So it's, um, but yeah, it, it I, I genuinely have. I've just completely, completely forgotten what was going on about. But anyway, it's like, so we anyway we talk about friends, and you get to that you get to that point, and and it's really easy to sit there and acknowledge the fact that 
you know we've got technology here and we talk about technology all the time and we say about the sort of kind of you know the trust aspect and yeah basically just friends and being there and just I was allowed to go and do that but I, I couldn't be left at home and, and nowadays I think the kids now they sit home they sit at home they've got a lot more freedom they they they're used to that they're used to talking to their friends and on social media so they they feel closer but they're not actually closer they they're actually further away but they'll find a way to get to each other whereas I'm so used to the opposite of just being able to walk to my friends and spend hours with them and have a good time that I find it a real big struggle that I can't do that now as an adult and I don't see that that's going to change and technology is supposed to give us um excuse me a second that was what was throwing me I was I had a bit of a dry throat there um and it I, I get it I find it very difficult I can't do that and the, and technology doesn't give me that ability because I'm so used to face to face I think if you're brought up with technology like that it's easy but when you have to adapt to it I I use social media now uh, as a tool it, or not social media but I use my phone as a tool it's 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 just it's there to get on my bank and everything I've watched it grow but I haven't embraced the growth socially anymore. I've pulled away from that. So with that comes, I want old school. I want to be able to just walk to somewhere and, and crack open a beer and have a good time. And I think that you don't get that ability now, which is where you kind of, and I don't want to revert to drinking over Skype and doing all that crap. I don't want that because I'm not into vr and all that i tried to be i thought i was going to be but i'm not i'm just really not into it i prefer human interaction i'm only where i am through human interaction and it's really it's massively important that we retain that and i'm really scared and i don't mean scared like you know but i'm just worried about how now brown cow um how nowadays people are so used to virtual that i don't want to embrace that though because i like i will never ever have got the experiences i would have done growing up through virtual i just would not i just would not i i wouldn't have got those times where you were smashed and you were in the middle of a field and you had no idea what the hell you were doing i would never have had those nights where you know i was whatever i think at one stage when i was younger i was running around that was it i run around all the i wanted to run around all the roundabouts in my local city naked and and i managed i think it was six out of eight so i wouldn't have had all those experiences if you just do it virtually do you know what i mean virtual life is just i don't like it i I like the whole when someone gets drunk and or someone's having a good time or someone comes out with a a joke or someone fucking does something crazy stupid i want to see it firsthand i want to live it I don't want to go, oh, I've got a photo, mate. Oh, I've got a video. Look at this guy. I don't fucking care. It's good entertainment, mate, but I don't want it for my life. You know, and I think we take abuse to that. Anyway, social media, it, it drains me. I've had to go, I've had to come back on Facebook, which has ripped me apart a, a, a little bit because I acknowledge that there's certain people I will never see. And. I came on and I was like, I said to them, it was actually uh, a couple of weeks, it was about a week ago, it was about, yeah, about a week ago, I think, and and I went, I'm not going to see such and such, I didn't really want to make it bigger than Benno, I didn't want to grow, so I've just, literally, I've come back on, i got like, I think there's like 16 people on there, and it's mainly family, and I'm just like, I don't want the trivia, I told you I don't want the trivia, so I don't want to see drama, so I'm really selective over who is on there, because I don't want to know about their life without sounding Jack like a jack prick, but I want to keep in contact with them, but I don't want to see droney shit, I don't mean their life, but I don't want their, I don't want someone who's on there, who wears their dirty laundry, or goes on about fucking work, or goes on about fucking shit, I want to just use it as a social thing, I want to, how's it going mate, seen you've been doing this, seen you've been doing that, but I'm not interested in fucking other stuff on there, it does my head in. So yeah, that that was so that, that that's the important thing so as you remove going back you know as i was saying as you remove these people you are going to find other people along the way so you really need to acknowledge don't say no to these occasions embrace them get them together don't embrace them and be an arsehole but really give it a go try and be the better person 
not make yourself not be the better person but excuse me be a better person go along enjoy them enjoy the journey enjoy the process enjoy what they you might learn i mean i've learned an absolutely amazing amount this weekend just through you know 50 minutes to an hour i think it was of shooting i learned lead and i was shooting you know clay pigeons that were coming from all angles you know rabbit ones that were running along the they were you know tearing across and across the floor so simulate that side of things so i've just i've learned all of that in the short space of an hour and you know i've I've been sort of gone back into my life with computers and i've so gaming and i've sort of been that's a really good thing so i want to kind of I'm, I'm conscious I do, it won't overtake my life to the point where I'm, I'm not that invested i can take it or leave it but i do i don't want it to become my social norm i'm trying to move away from that and get more virtual and not so virtual get more reality face to face go back a bit old school um so i'm just kind of making the right changes and i'm hoping by now you've kind of made the right changes and as i said to you at the start of the podcast that i've acknowledged that a drop in and when I drop and I go down in that, that, that place when I'm not stimulated mentally and I'm stimulated socially, when I go into those low places, I don't tend to, everything tends to slip. I tend to move away from the reflection time. I tend to move away from the cold showers. I just I just go back. It's really, and what I'm trying to do is stop myself from going into those negative spaces and actually acknowledging and that's where I learn that's where we're learning that's why I'm talking to you this hasn't really got a, a podcast agenda this is just saying how I've dealt with scenarios and certain things along the way and these changes I'm making and what I'm doing I'm seeing it earlier and then I'm I'm going back up and the point and the consciousness of this is by saying no you've already defeated the whole purpose because you've you've not gone and had a good time you've not learned from that person you've not had an experience you've not had there's you've missed out on an aspect of your life that your one precious life that you can that you've got that you've you're just bumbling your way through and as i spoke to you in the last podcast and we were talking about the whole you know it's you know we were talking about sort of kind of um friends and all that sort of stuff and um it's really important to make sure that you, you you nurture the right things around you. You you keep on track. If you if you drop your track, and you don't acknowledge it, it's really easy to slump back in. You'll miss these scenarios. You'll miss these experiences, and that's where it's really important to make sure that you you do the right thing and you keep yourself focused. You work on yourself. But as I've said to you, you can't do anything until you want to work on yourself as well. So you, this is what I'm saying. I've had people try and talk to me all the way through this last nine ten years say done this do that do that and I, unfortunately some of those people have been along and been actually negative for me um which is unfortunate but we live and learn but i've really got to the point where this year i am actually focused i don't want to be i, I do you know what it's, it's actually it's actually quite easy to stay depressed and and that and that to be honest with you is the truth it's actually quite easy to stay depressed because you just shut yourself away you just say no but it is harder to make those changes it's harder to say yes but i'll tell you something it's a lot more rewarding in life to say yes even if you've got to do it in little spells and you don't do it too often you know but try and try and keep then reflecting i could have like i said to you i could have got out of that situation this weekend i've got a absolutely amazing party coming up on friday it's to celebrate my new job my promotion um and it's just close little network of friends uh, in in the bar and um we're just gonna have a couple of beers and i haven't seen uh these two particular friends uh one of them's my best friend and the other one's a friend i've not seen for a long time it that he's like said he's new into the group and, and he's a fucking positive um i was he always reminds me of the duracell bunny <laughs> it's just you know what i mean i get i get uh often get um 
similarities to uh, Tigger. That's that's ultimately what everyone thinks I'm like. I'm just like a fucking crazy box of frogs that's constantly on the go. So I'll take that. So when I give you a, a kind of, I, I look at him and he's, you know, he's very much kind of like the, um, you know, just the, the crazy box of frogs. Um, but heart is always in the right place and always really good. I, you know, I know, I just know he's got a good heart. Um, and the same as, uh, you know, my my friend, my best friend. But I always resort to, resort to my best friend a little bit like Eeyore. You know what I mean? He's a bit like, hello. <laughs> you know, he's just, he's just so chilled out and so relaxed. Um, but, you know, as you get to learn people's characters, you get to associate them with people and things. And, and it's really funny. So it's, it's, it's a good way of stimulating your own mind about your friends as well um, in a non-sexual way. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's it, it you've got to make these important decisions and you've got but you've got to work on yourself and i'm working on myself and i'm acknowledging like i said straight away after this i'm going to be whacking on the, the reflection time for a quick half hour and just relax and chill because i've had a busy day today i've been out on site visits walking i've done fucking 16 miles today in walking um and tomorrow i've got another busy day so i need to make sure that i keep my well-being going and that's ultimately what I really want to talk about today. It was just this week, and that's just a week of experiences. And I've learned so much, and I'm constantly learning about my friends, and I'm constantly making the effort. And I'm really trying to better myself on a daily basis. I'm trying to be, you know, a better husband. I'm trying to be a, a better dad all the time. You know, my daughter came in, and she said to me, she wants this uh, this toy vector. I think there used to be a toy called Cosmo, and there's a new one called Vector now, and she wants one. She but she came up to me and she said, you know, I, I really want it, but, um, you know, it's a lot of money. It's going to take me a few birthdays, et cetera, et cetera. Now, my other, one of my other daughters came up to me and said she wanted a hoverboard once, and not the Michael J. Fox one, you know, the roller one. And um, I was like, yeah, cool. It's like 200 quid. I was like, Phew. I was like, well, if you can show me commitment, you pay, save half of it, I'll, I'll, I'll pay the other half. And, uh, I said it so I said it to my other daughter and I was like, Well three fifty's quite a lot of money. It, it really is on, on a toy that I can only be described. It looks amazing, it's a little AI toy, it looks really good. She's a bit geeky like that, you know, she's really into her computers and, and you know, I think she's a bit of a whiz with games and all that sort of stuff. So I was like, Yeah, cool. I was like, But your birthday's coming up, so we you know and we planned it and I said to her, Well, I I I'll put a hundred pounds into it, guaranteed. See what the, you get for your birthday coming up. And then see if we can put you up a deal. So, but it was just trying to be a better dad. And it started by she wanted a, one of these one kilogram bags of sweets for her birthday. Um, and she bought it and, and she paid a tenner. And um, she was like, oh, so, and then I found the, the tenner and I, and I gave it straight back to her. And I said, there goes, there's another tenner towards your, uh, towards your toy. So I'm trying to be a better dad, you know, and that's, that's hard. I mean, you've been an arsehole for a long time, not a very good dad. Um, I've always loved my kids. I've just never been able to worry. And I, and because of the depression, PTSD, etc., you know, I couldn't deal with noise and what comes with kids, noise. So the best part of them growing up have, has had a dad as a bit of an ass. So I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be a better friend to people. I'm trying to do these podcasts to educate people and, you know, hopefully that they'll try and better themselves to be better friends, to be better dads, husbands, etc., etc., I don't know, it's, it, this is an ambitious thing, I know, but I'm really enjoying the process, so I don't really care, do you know what I mean? It, it, like I said to you, I've spent 25 hours talking to nobody, you know, but I'm not talking to nobody, am I? I'm talking to all of you, and that's really rewarding for me, because I'm just explaining to you that I'm still going through these things, I still have, like I said, you know, that out at the weekend, I could have easily taken it, and maybe a couple of months ago I would have done, and, and, I, and I, in fact, I can guarantee I would have done. I would have said, yeah, no worries, mate. And I've done it. I've sacked stuff off. And even when I've been let down, I know how it feels. So as I said to you, I've got a, a party coming up on the 11th and we're going to come around. It's not a party. It's just celebrating my, um, you know, celebrating my sort of promotion and, and moving into somewhere where I think I'm going to be really happy. Um, and it was kind of like the icing on the cake for me, if I'm honest, because, <clears throat> you know, to in the same week, like I said, I... I, I I I started my job, uh, and then two days later was when I started when I left the old place. So it was kind of like really fitting that that fitted in the first week. Just really went. I don't know. I don't know whether it was because of my positivity, dare I say it, but I was happy and things were aligning nicely. 
and to go into work and and see all of them there as well like literally everyone was in that i you know normally you don't get a couple of people in but they're all in and i got closure and one of the things that i did notice there was an air, when i was there the first two hours and i bear in mind i've not spoke to them for a year any of them um, but it was the same shit <laughs> the same the same the same thing was being spun to me by the area manager um was being spun to the new site manager it was and i'd listened to it and he was saying the same rhetoric the same bullshit to to the new site manager and i went okay and then i was listening to the to the workers who were my friends and they had the same bullshit problems and you know i just looked and went i'm so glad i I, and i'm so glad i could come in and see that with clarity in my head um and i was able to walk away and go i'm fucking done i never ever want to cross that bridge again um which is really really rewarding for me so i've helped myself and that's where you've got to help yourself otherwise what's the point you've got to help yourself and then when other people do help you and i have friends around me that help me because you've helped yourself their help is more rewarding certainly is to me when i invite you around and we come around we we will have a good time this friday i will be robbie williams and it will be a case of let me entertain you because that is what i'm going to be doing and i'm working hard tirelessly to make the place pristine i'm filling walls and filling holes sorry and painting and getting it looking perfect because i i like to show myself off i'm very vain like that Um, but at the same time i'm very proud of what i've done because everything i've done i've done with my own hands you know my log cabin was installed and built with my own hands everything in it was ba- made in, with my own hands you know my conservatory was put up with my own hands you know so and i've learned all that my garden is like it is with my own hands so i'm very proud i'm a very very proud person and very invested in my projects so for someone to come around and embrace that and let me do what i do and that's entertain it will be a good night and that is really important to me and i want to nurture it so that i do that more often with you know more people i'll always have a core people that will always be close to me and i'll always embrace others but you know we we learn and we develop as we go along through life we understand that okay well people are going to come into your life and they're going to dip in and say hello and they're going to dip out don't hold on to it learn from your experiences with them don't you know don't don't overthink it just learn from your experiences they're going to come in and they're going to talk and they're going to be part of your life and they're going to go and there's people that could be in for a little bit longer and then they're going to go and then there's people that just don't leave and the ones that don't leave are the ones that you hold on to so when you work on yourself and you make yourself better and you you stop saying no and you stop being lazy and you stop being a snob and you stop being stuck up or you stop being depressed all these negatives when you i say you the person listening when you work on yourself and you turn around and go i am going to work on myself now no matter what i don't need the motivation i've got the tools to do it because i'm listening to somebody or hopefully you're getting some tips and tricks off of me i'm listening to him i'm giving him a go and i'm embracing them i'm going to mold them and adapt those tips and tricks to fit my life and then when i work on myself I will nurture the people around me and you've hopefully gone through that process of closing out the negativity you know who those bastards are close them down or pull them in when you want to whatever you want to do make it work for you make your life work do that and then when you do that and you work on yourself and then you start nurturing the people around you and the things around you and you've got that new job or you've got that ambition you've got i mean i had my friend come up to me and say james I've listened to your podcast i've got a meeting with the headmaster i'm asking what the next level is and i'm like i'm fucking proud of you mate i'm really really proud of you you did that not me you i might have pushed you i might have told you i might have put some words i might have been a little whisper in your ear but you did it you went up and made that call you want the ambition you've gone and got it mate here you go life has got that opportunity grab it people will say to me now i was said to you know i acknowledged today to my boss that there's no loyalty in in work anymore 
So bounce around until you get yourself happy. Why should you sit there and be miserable while the other person around you is happy? Don't. Do what you want to do with your life. Don't chase the wrong dream. Don't chase someone else's dream. Chase your own dream. If you're not happy doing that job, move the fuck on. Learn. Put, invest in some time. Sit there and spend some time on education into a new role. I've done it in a year. In a year, I have gone from not knowing health and safety to working in a strategic compliance manager's job. In a year. To be in technical status in IOSH, which is a minimum of three years, or, excuse me, the holder of a level six. So my one year has top trumped people that do it naturally for three years. So I've already courted my time. If I can do it, you can do it. This needs to stop being excuses. You nurture that. And when you look after yourself, the people that you've nurtured around you are the ones that start looking after you. And then you start bouncing off of each other. Not quite literally. Hold it off. It's a friendship, okay? Don't take it too far. But you will. You'll bounce off of each other. And when you're feeling low, you'll go to that person and you will get the response required to perk you back up. Because you've nurtured the right people around you. You won't get it where you say, all right, mate, how's it going? Oh, yeah, fucking... Dribble, dribble, dribble. Yeah, mate, I'm having a bit of a fucking tough time too, actually, mate. And 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 they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But mine... You're like, fuck off, mate. It can't be arsed to you, buddy. Do my tits in, mate. Yeah, well, I'll suck it up then, shall I? But you vented. Do you know what I mean? Whereas what you want to do is go, dude, I'm having a fucking shit time. Mate, don't fucking worry about it. You've got this, this, and this. Give me a call tomorrow. Fucking, we'll have a chew. We'll chew, we'll chew the fat, mate. We've got a party coming up on Friday. If not, if you haven't got a party, dude, what are you doing Friday, mate? Let's go for a fucking afternoon pie and a pint. Do you know what I mean? That's the people you want around you. You want the ones that literally say, dude, I'm fucking struggling. I, I know for a fact that I've got enough people around me that, that if I nurtured, I've nurtured enough people around me to say, dude, I'm fucking struggling. And I know right now, hand on fucking heart, hand on heart, no. The people that are immediately around me now, if I said to you, where I was six months ago, if I said to you, I'm in the middle of the fucking field. I've taken 80 tablets. I don't want to be here anymore. You're going to sit there and hopefully go, what fucking field are you in, mate? What fucking field are you in? I'm fucking coming now. I don't give a fuck, mate. And hopefully you're that person that is in a situation. I know for a fact that if anybody of my mates, anybody, because my missus knows I have, the people around me she knows I trust and I genuinely love. The people that are around me, that are close to me genuinely love them because I'm an emotional person. I'm a bit of a, a bit of a crybaby like that. Um, I am an emotional person, but I'm very invested in their lives, and I hope that they're invested in mine. She knows that if I said to her at three o'clock in the morning, "I'm just going out. I've got some shit to sort out. Nothing to fucking worry about." She'd be like, "Are you sure?" She'd give me the courtesy, "Are you sure? Is everything okay?" And I would probably tell her briefly, so she, but she would understand fucking in that car boom and i would hope that the people around me no matter what time of the fucking day it is work does not fucking matter the next day i used to think that fuck me i don't want to pick you up two o'clock in the morning i'll be bollocks for work tomorrow who fucking cares mate your family your friends are the most important thing in this life your job if they sack you for it highly unfucking likely we this the it's sackable is unfucking heard of unless you're a complete tit, you know. It, it, you know you you, and, and and no employer would look at you and go, my mate was doing this, in today's current climate and when we're so invested in mental health and well being, if I went into work and said, or phoned in any of my bosses and said this has fucking happened, I can't tell you too much, but this happened and I'm a little bit bollocks. I'm coming in at midday. I'm really sorry, but I need to get my head down. They should understand. Because that is what we're doing. We're nurturing mental health and well-being. So I'm a diversity and inclusion advisor because I love it. Helping people. It's massively important. Nurture the right people around you so when you work on yourself, you're bouncing along. And here I am three months later 
and dare I say it, I am a little bit worried because I am sat here thinking, when's it going to go wrong? Because I'm trying to be as confident, fun, friendly as I can. I don't think I'll ever get back to where I was, but that's because I'm 40, not fucking 20. But I'm certainly invested. There's certain situations, and I'm probably a little bit more of a dick about it now because I'll go, you know, we'll, we'll be invited somewhere, and they'll go, you know, we're going to see such and such, and I'll be like, no, we're fucking not. You can. It's your friend. It's not my friend. Oh, but such and such are there. Be lonely. I I really don't care. Um, I'm not going to sit there and force conversation with that person, and I'm not even fucking interested. I'm sorry, but I got one life. I'd I'd rather fucking go and spend it with somebody that I really care about. And I'm quite abrupt like that now, and that's probably quite rude. I wouldn't do it if I was forced in a situation, um, you know. But if it was a situation I had a choice then yeah, I would, because that's not my close little circle. That's not my circle of trust. Meet the fuckers! <laughs> that's a good film. Um, meet the parents, in case you've on about the referral of the first version. Um, but yeah, my circle of trust is very, very slight and small. But I like that, because the further you look for trust, um, the fainter the circle becomes. So you then lose your demarcation lines so you don't really know if you can trust them and then the whole process is completely failed and that's normally what happens when you invite loads of these people and you think that your best friends they're nurturing your life they're looking after you they love you they're invested in you no they fucking don't care mate they're on a selfish journey and they'll do whatever they can to get to it so be really cautious and careful about who you look after um do you know what? i'm gonna knock on the head there really if i'm honest i've had a good rant in fact i've gone right over because I felt I deserve, you deserved it. Um, I've got a really important subject I'm going to talk about tonight, tomorrow, sorry, um, actually. And, it, and it's on the back of, um, it's on the back of the conversation from the last podcast, um, you know, what's your purpose? And um, as always, I love feedback. So, you know, the feedback came in and I loved it, um, you know, and, and from one of my friends, he actually said, you know what's the purpose and on all i i hit the definition uh right i need to come back with you some tools and uh he helped me along the way so um fantastic and i've got i'm going to talk about that on the next podcast i really just want to talk about this one and just again it's my journey so i want to tell you how i'm still dealing with things give you tips and tricks give you a little bit of advice just talk <laughs> say hello and yeah here we are so I was a little bit excitable, so I've just calmed down a little bit, actually, because I feel... Do you know what? It's really weird. Um, I just... I almost feel less tense. It's crazy. I can't... I can't... I can't really say it anymore, how talking really does help. I've got a smile on my face. My shoulders, for the first time, feel less tense. I noticed in the day that it felt like I had Mount Everest on each shoulder. They were like right up. I was like, Christ, who's climbing these bastards today? And that was just because I was tense. I hadn't spoke. I hadn't spoke to anyone really all day. And here I am now. I was like, I need to do this. Um, I was supposed to see another friend tonight, but didn't. Hopefully I'll see him tomorrow. And um, yeah, here I am. Just thought I'd rant on and I feel great for it. I feel actually lightheaded. I always feel nice and relaxed because I've just I'm slumped in my sofa actually because it's nice to talk and get it all off your chest and uh, you know I've had a lot I think I've had so many experiences in this last week with closures and meeting new friends and having new experiences and you know a, bl- a blistering hangover on the worst drink I can ever have. so please promise me if someone offers you devil dragons it is devil dragon soup please do not take it oh my god um yeah it's it's just the devil's work man it's just not right um so yeah it's uh yeah just nurturing now i'm just and i feel really positive i really do and i know for a fact when i get stuck into this new job i'm just it's just going to be flying away when i was traveling around and stuff and you know i've got a little goal i want to tick again um i'd love to be able to uh, work with my best mate again um so i i've i've told him and promised him that i'm going to try my hardest to get him into uh, a job with me <laughs> don't know how i can do it but uh you know i'll certainly try and get him qualified up so he can sit with an interview with someone and yeah I, I, that'd be an amazing sort of top my time off because that's what i was supposed to do in my last job and we did for seven years but 
unfortunately I was rendered um, you know useless in the end because I was that devastated by the way I was being treated that it, it went it went horribly wrong um, but say la vie we, we live and learn but all we do now is just look forward to the weekends and the holidays so thank you for listening I, I'm sorry it's been a bit of a long one today I'm, I've been all over like I said I've been up down I've had a bit of a high in the middle there because I was excited I'm talking to you it's really important and I'm just I've got so much to talk about in terms of how I deal with these experiences now that's the point where I lock them in and, and I don't there's no real rhyme or reason on how I deliver them I'm just like oh shit and that's why I get a little lost in thought you probably realised um, that I do lose track of thought but it's because my brain is firing all the time and sometimes what happens is, is I, I, I talk about a subject and I'll go off on a, a sort of kind of detour and I'll get so invested in that detour that I'll forget about where I was and sometimes I revert back so I must apologise but I hope it adds a little bit of fun to the the podcast because you're like god this fucking guy's crazy um but yeah so yeah thank you for listening um really good really good podcast really positive actually really positive there's a lot of positivity at the moment um should i be scared about negativity coming um you know i don't know i I don't know i'm just i'm i'm not doing anything stupid i'm not doing anything out the norm and i'm just trying to just trying to be a valuable person and a valuable asset in life and just have good experiences and fun as I go along for it. So, yeah, thank you for listening. Have an amazing rest of the week, but I will talk to you before that because this topic will be coming up tomorrow, and it's based around friends. So, um, yeah, it'll be really good. I'm smiling away, but thank you very much. So enjoy your evening. Take care. Bye.